Hello everyone, it's me Christy. How are we all? It has been a while. <laughs> Hi. Um, if you don't watch my sprints, you probably haven't seen my face in a while. I do apologise for that. Universe A kind of threw me off a little bit and I just never got back into the swing of creating content for you guys. I filmed a couple of videos and I've just never been happy with them so we're just keeping it chill. We are literally sitting on the floor of my living room, the rabbits are here, I've got a pile of books next to me and I'm just going to tell you guys of what I'm hoping to read over the springtime. This is a very very tentative TBR, we all know I never stick to my TBRs but I like to set them because why not? Also I've got a new camera which I'm hoping will help keep me nice and motivated in preparation for Yalk as well, like I am just here for for all of the book community at the moment, I can't lie, like it's just, it's it's going good. I am a happy gal, I can't lie to you. So yeah, I have um, <laughs> have a nice, um, nice stack of books here <laughs> um, and I'm hoping to just go through them all with you. So yeah, let's just get right into it. So I recently got a new shelf which I filmed a tour of and then decided I didn't like so hopefully it will be coming in the like near future for you guys. It's basically full of a bunch of books I'm really excited to read. Now at the time I was very like in a fantasy mood. Now not really so much because I can't decide what I want to read. And to get myself out of that mood, I usually have to read a few like YA contemporaries. So <laughs> we have a mixture here. Um, there's no guarantee I'm gonna get to any of them to be honest with you because honestly, I've picked up a ridiculous amount of books in the past week and not gotten further than like 30 pages in any of them. So <laughs> it's not going great. Um, but hopefully we're gonna find something. I'm currently reading Ophelia after all and hoping that's gonna do the trick. But yeah, basically I have a nice mixture here and I have a book in my hand I'm gonna start with, but I'm actually gonna change it up. So, um, <laughs> obviously I haven't done a wrap up of the books I've read yet this year. I don't know if I will, because to be honest with you, my reading hasn't really been great. Maybe I'll just kind of mention it in a vlog or something sometime, just kind of what I've been up to. But one book I did read was Gallant by V.E. Schwab. Now, I have a fair collection of editions of this book now, and um, because I read it and absolutely loved it and gave it five stars, and it's literally one of my new favourite books of all time. Um, it's definitely going to be in my top 10 of 2022, I can guarantee you that. So, I'm not gonna lie to you, I kind of want to do a reread. I would love to reread and annotate this. That would just be like the best time. Although I, I tried the other day, I tried to start reading it again and the writing was just a bit too much for me right now. Um, v.E. Schwab's writing is incredible, like literally unmatched, but for Gallant, like it's just so good that my brain was like, I can't comprehend this right now. I can't lie to you, like my brain was just, was not having a fun time. I just needed some pretty like simple, this is what's happening. I don't need to read into it any further or like marvel about how amazing it is sort of writing. Which I mean, writing can be great in so many different ways, but just in like the lyrical kind of way that V.E. Schwab's is, um, it just wasn't coping with me right now. But I really want to get around to doing a reread of this because it was so amazing. I need to annotate it. Um, and I own so many copies of it that I, um, I should probably read them. <laughs> so yeah, this is the US paperback. It is super floppy. I'm having a grand old time. Hopefully I'll get around to it sometime soon. We'll carry on with like a fantasy kind of theme. Um, after reading Gallant, I was like, I wonder if I'm in like a whimsical fantasy mood, right? And so I need to watch Maddie's whimsical fantasy recommendations video because I know she put one up in preparation for Ramathon, which I'm like low key taking part in, but not particularly but I am in Team Serain so whimsical fantasy is a shout. So I was thinking maybe I could finally pick up the House of Mystery and see like <laughs> maybe finally I could. Possibly. <laughs> I can't lie to you the thought of reading this makes me super happy because I just feel like I'm gonna absolutely love it. However I am a little intimidated. You know I'm just I'm a little scared I can't lie to you. It's everyone's favourite. I'm just a little scared. <laughs> this is about um, a guy called Linus and goes to visit like a school of magical children and I know that it's like gay as fuck and every time I mention it I read out what V.E. Schwab said about this book <laughs> and 
I will continue to do so because V.E. Schwab literally blurbed it saying I loved it. It's like being wrapped up in a big gay blanket. Simply perfect. And that's just enough for me. That is just enough for me. That is totally fine. Like I will read it because of that. Um, so I want to get to this whimsical fancy. I'm feeling feeling it would be a good shout after loving gallant so much i feel like this is my fantasy like i go on about how much i don't like fantasy but this like this this is my kind of fantasy so as much of this as you can recommend to me i feel like this is it because i just oh <laughs> i'm so excited <laughs> I need to recompose. Other fantasy books in line with the V.E. Schwab train. <laughs> I'm going with this Savage Song. So this is book one in the Monsters of Vanity duology. There is a second book, Our Dark Duet, which is like over there on my bookshelf. I got gifted this by Jade and I feel like I'm gonna absolutely love this. <laughs> it is a YA series by V. Schwab and it's, I don't really, I know what it's about but like not enough to blur it for you if you know what I mean. Like I have an idea in my head but not enough of an idea for me to make it into like a coherent sentence to actually tell you guys. So I'm not going to. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But we all know that I don't like knowing loads about the books before I read them. But I know that it's to do with like monsters. And um, I think there's something to do with like music in here. I'm just, I'm excited. And after loving Gallant so much, both of the V.E. Schwab's I've read, I've given five stars and absolutely loved because I read Vicious like years ago and loved it. And then I read Gallant. It's literally one of my all time favorites. So V. Schwab, you're set in my sights pretty high for all your books. And I just don't know if I'm ready. I just don't know. So yeah, <laughs> we're going with the Savage Song. We shall see if I pluck up the courage to actually read it, but it's definitely on the list. The next book I have on this list, I feel like Maddie's going to be pretty happy about. <laughs> a Sound for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. Now, Maddie read this last year and it's literally one of our all time favorite books now. So I would absolutely love to get to it soon. I hardly know anything about it, but I know that it made Maddie like think a lot. And I feel like that is the sort of book that always ends up being really high on my favorites lists. It is, I don't know how many books that are gonna be. I know there's definitely a second book, but I don't know if it's like a series or if it's just like a duology, but it is part of the Monk and Robot series is like the name of it. I'm presuming there's a monk and I'm presuming there's a robot. Basically, I'm super excited to get to this. It is a tour release, so I feel like I'm gonna like it because they tend to have some pretty good books in that publishing company. So yeah, super, super excited to get to this. I really hope I'm gonna love it because if I hate another one of Maddie's all-time favorites, I'm gonna have to start questioning this. Like, Maddie, I love all of your book recommendations, but Strange the Dreamer wasn't it. And if this ain't it either, like that's just not good. So we have our fingers crossed. <laughs> Although I do think this is gonna be way better than Strange Dreamer for me. Right, the next book, and I come on to this one next because we were speaking about Maddie, um, Crossed by Ali Condi. This is the second book in the Matched trilogy. Um, basically, me and Maddie were on sprints and impromptuly decided to do a read along of this series. There's a Discord for it. I will attempt to link it down below if you guys want to join. Um, I read the first one. I think I gave it three stars, but the idea of the world is actually really fun. And in terms of it being, like taking into consideration when it was published and the type of story it is, I feel like it's actually pretty good. Right, okay. Apologies if the angle has changed. Um, the rabbits were having a bit of a moment, so I had to go and check on them. Crossed. <laughs> Basically, the first book, it was good. I liked it for like a trashy YA dystopian from the early 2010s. I feel like it's what we're expecting from it. So yeah, I'm excited to get to this one. I need to get to it soon. We could include Reached on this TBR as well. Although I don't know how often I'm gonna be reading the next one in the series, but yeah. A quick read, a fun read, nothing too like mind bending, <laughs> which is kind of what I need right now. So maybe I'll pick this one up sooner than I'm anticipating. The next book is Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Bustanica. Um, I started this, I got about 30 pages in and then decided that I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I've left the bookmark in, 
because why not? But yeah, I'm gonna start again from the beginning and just try and enjoy this. Um, this is basically a world where it's a dystopian um, and the cover is amazing. Um, it's basically a world where all animals get a disease and um, they, they resort to eating humans. So <laughs> that's what this is about. Um, another one I think Maddie enjoyed, I know Cassidy enjoyed, and I feel like I'm really gonna enjoy. So hopefully this one turns out well. It's another one I feel like could be like a favourite if I enjoy it as much as I think I'm going to. I think this is like a pretty like gory one, but hopefully it'll be a good one. Um, because like I said multiple times, I quite like the gory, mind-provoking books. It's just making sure I'm in the right mood for them, which hopefully will come soon. <laughs> Next we're going to go with First It Become Ashes by Kay Ann Spada. This is going to go on every single TBR of mine until I finally read it because it is the author that wrote my all-time favourite book, Docile, um, and this is his second release and I really, really, really want to get to it. I have no idea what it's about. I have no idea. I don't want to know. I just, I don't. But like, first of all, this cover, incredible. I love it. It's just like super like impactful just like the contrast of the colors for like the massive font i just love it i'm gonna guess it's a dystopian although i have no idea it's a nice sharp one which we always love on this channel who's who's actually blurbed this one nk jamison said spada is the rare author able to tackle trauma and healing without flinching which i feel like is quite accurate um in terms of like when i read docile i was literally so like mind fucked <laughs> is the word i'm gonna use but in the most incredible way like I have no idea how he actually did it and I really hope this book kind of tackles the same thing because I just think he does it so well so hopefully that's kind of my expectations for this they might be a bit high um considering his his debut is literally my all-time favorite but hopefully it works out well and I end up loving it I'm just kind of realizing all the books on this uh, TBR are books that I'm like stupidly excited to get to in terms of like I literally think they're gonna be like all-time favorites so <laughs> this could basically be a five star predictions list as well. I can't lie, not all of them, but a good chunk of them so far anyway. <laughs> right, moving on. The next one we're gonna go with is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Um, I got gifted this by Maddie's mom, so thank you so much. I saw Leah really loved this. I think another booktuber read it, I can't remember who it was, I think it was maybe Jack Edwards, I don't know, I have no idea. I've seen it on other channels as well basically and every time I go into Waterstones this cover grabs me and it was literally just like the most perfect thing when Leah started tweeting about saying how much she loved it so I, I have to. I just have to. It is also super short. Mandy's mom said she absolutely loved it and um, so I really 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 want to get to it. I don't know lots of what it's about. The blurb on the front says a love song to black art and thought and that's from um, Yaa Jesse and um, which is the author of Homegoing. I am super excited to get to this one. Again another one I think will be quite good and like the thought provoking elements of it so hopefully that will kind of come through in this as well um, because short stories tend to have quite an impactful punch because there's like a reason they're being written that short. So yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one hopefully soon. <laughs> um, I keep thinking like short books are the way to go to get me out of, out of my slump, but a lot of the short books I gravitate towards are quite like punchy reads, like they're not like quick fun reads, they're like quite like in-depth stories. So yeah, anyway, open water. The next book I have here is Anatomy by Dana Schwartz. Um, can we just take a minute to look at the cover of this because the dress that the girl's wearing is in the shape of a heart and I actually love that. Um, the cover of this is like super simple yet like super impactful. Like the, like the font and everything that's used on it as well is like ace for the theme of the book. Um, so it's blurbed by Neil Gaiman. It's set in Adam Brown 1817. I'll read like the very first part of the blurb. Um, it just says, Hazel Sinnott is a lady who wants to be a surgeon more than she wants to marry. Um, Jack Cutter is a resurrection man who's just trying to survive in a city where it's too easy to die. And I'm guessing it's about their story together. It's a bit of a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gonna irritate me if I don't remember the word I'm looking for. Let me, um, let me do a little bit of research. Right, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is stupid. Gothic, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, 
<laughs> there we go, it literally says on the back, a gothic tale full of mystery and romance. I knew I had seen the word somewhere. Yeah, obviously it's historical. It's quite out of my comfort zone, but in like the best way. Um, I actually heard about this on TikTok. I don't know how, um, but I'm not bad about it because this actually seems like a proper gem to come out of any TikTok recommendations I've ever heard. So yeah, I am actually super excited to get to this one. I do think it's gonna be super amazing. It's one of those books where like the more I think about it, the more stupidly excited I get to read it. So yeah. Hopefully soon. I'm saying that about them all. That is the whole point of this video being a spring TBR. Right, um, I have three more books here. Um, we're gonna start off with Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover. This was the book I initially picked up and then decided to totally change the order for some reason. India read this recently and loved it. It is kind of like the only Colleen Hoover left that I really, really, really want to read. Um, that's like kind of hyped, I guess. Um, I do want to read her other work as well, obviously, kind of her newer stuff. But um, Ugly Love, I've heard, it's a bit of a sob story. <laughs> like it's a bit of like one of those books where you read it and then end up just crying your eyes out. But it's still like, it's a contemporary story. Um, I say a contemporary romance. I don't really know who call her works romances. Um, <laughs> You kind of know where I'm coming from. If you've read any Colleen Hoover, you know what I mean. Um, but yeah, I've heard lots of great things about Ugly Love. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm hoping soon, maybe. Right, the next book I have here is The Summer of Everything by Julian Winters. The main thing that attracted me to this is it's like the age range of the characters is like when they've just left like high school into college. Um, Sadly, that's a little bit younger than me, um, but only just. It's kind of as close to my age range as we're gonna get. It's usually either young adult or like adult. And um, so I'm just trying to hunt out some of these books where the characters are kind of early 20s. I'm finding more as I go. Once you, if once you start to find the right places to look, um, they're not as difficult to find as you would think. But this was kind of one of the first ones that really jumped out at me. It's gay, um, <laughs> if that makes a difference to any of you makes a difference to me. Um, it's a nice short one as well, it's under 200 pages. Yeah, I'm excited to get to this one too, but yeah, definitely the age of the characters was the main thing that stuck out to me for this one. So yeah, super excited to get to this one and hopefully I will soon. And then last but certainly not least, a book that I have started um, is Fat Chance Charlie Vega. This has been mentioned in quite a few videos since I started my channel and I'm hoping to finally get to it. I have read nine pages of it, a total, obviously I'm super proud of. Um, I'm so far in, as you can see, I've got my bookmark right here. Um, <laughs> Which, if you don't know, I've been knitting these bookmarks recently, which are super cute. Coming of age as a fat brown girl in a white Connecticut suburb is hard. Harder when your whole life is on fire, though. That's the fun little tagline on the back, so that's what you guys get to know. Um, a lot of the time I actually prefer these little taglines to actual blurbs because I feel like they give you a good enough idea of what the book's about without, like, totally spoiling everything. <laughs> so, yeah, that's kind of what this is about. I'm super excited to get to it. I think... This could be my next read after Ophelia After All, just to try and kind of get the young adult contemporary to get me out of this kind of weird mood I'm in. Um, and then we can kind of dive into some of the more um, mind provoking ones I've got on the list here. So yeah, um, Flat Charge Charlie Vega by Crystal Maldonado is the final one on the list. So this is it guys, this is the final stack of how many books? 12. It's a nice number to have. Um, it is 12, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, I thought I'd only picked at 11, so I was a bit confused there, but clearly not. So yeah, this is kind of the nice little stack I'm hoping to get to this spring, probably into summer, because my reading right now ain't it. But yeah, hopefully I shall be back to posting regular content as of now. I hope you guys are excited and I'm sorry to have been gone for so long. I really miss the community. I can't lie. Down in the description you will find links to my Goodreads, Twitter, my Instagram I never use, my wish list, all the good things I used to leave down below as always. I'll have a list of all the books that you guys are getting to see as well as any people I mentioned in the video. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Give the video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all next time. Bye.